Welcome gentlemen to a let's play of Victoria 2 Heart of Darkness. Victoria 1 was my first Paradox Love. Uh, Victoria 2 I played a fair bit of as well, although eventually Crusader Kings and Crusader Kings 2 sort of dragged me away from it. And it's been years since I've done a proper playthrough. I uh, did do in, just to refresh myself, a Krakow playthrough where I tried to form Poland. I failed miserably. So what I'll be doing is playing as the Russian Empire. The Russian Empire is a very good sort of beginner's nation. Uh, it is so large that if you make some mistakes, you can still come out pretty strong. Like if you just look at the population base, um, apart from maybe the United Kingdom, where one of the largest, the United Kingdom and obviously the Chinese Empire, but the Chinese Empire is primitive, so they don't count quite as much. We're one of the largest nations. We've got huge land masses. We've got very decent resources. Our main issue is very poor literacy and very poor... Uh, on the back of the poor literacy, we've got poor uh, levels of craftsmen and artisans and the like. Right. So, Victoria 2, unlike... Crusader Kings 2, which is more about the dynasty, or EU4, which is more about obsessively micromanaging everything, is more about setting sliders uh, and directing your country. Uh, you can, you, there's still war and the like, uh, which is micro intensive, but mostly it's about choosing the direction that your country is going to take. Now, the first thing you want to do really is look at what uh, research you want to do. I'm going to go with the cultural research. We have a bonus cultural research because we've got uh, avant-garde intellig intelligentsia or something like that, uh, which is a negative to naval tech research, which we don't care about. Positive to cultural, small negative to industrial. Uh, I'm pretty happy to leave it on this and not suffer the consequences of one of the decisions I'll show you shortly. So if we go to ideological, no, sorry, positivis positivism, we get better education efficiency, uh, which is really what we want to do early. We, we also want to get idealism as soon as it's unlocked, uh, which is nine, uh, 1840, but I think it is, let me have a quick look, there might be another one I want to do. It's quite good to get practical steam engine just for our economy, uh, and uh, like grabbing something in the army to begin with. If we grab um, maybe iron muzzle loaded artillery, I'm thinking, or army professionalism. Actually, you know, we're going to go army professionalism. Usually the best tactic to take with Egypt. I will ally with Egypt. The best tactic to take with Russia is just to get your education up uh, and then by sort of 1860, 1870, activate. I'm going to attempt to fight the Chinese Empire early, just to get a better uh, population and industrial base. Uh, and because otherwise you're just sort of sitting there doing nothing for a very long time. So I will actually do professionalism to give us the extra morale and military tactics. Uh, it will take us a while, our low literacy really cripples our research. Um, but hey, you do what you gotta do. Now, when you're looking at this screen, there's a lot of modifiers that you can safely sort of ignore when you're first starting the game out. Like, what each of these does, if you just know, well, I want to I wanna go to war, just start filling out army. Navy, if you want to be a colonial power. Commerce uh, isn't actually that useful until later in the game, I find. Uh, tax efficiency just means... So say I've put these guys up to 100% tax, because of our tax efficiency of 23%, our effective tax rate is only 23% of their income. If we were to research uh, stock exchange, it would be 28%. We'd get more money from them, they'd have less money. Generally, you don't want to go too high in the tax anyway, so I don't find it that useful until later. Uh, monetary system is administrative efficiency. Administrative efficiency, I like to think of it as how liquid your people are. The more efficient your administration is, the more likely a, so any given pop is to either upgrade or downgrade from, say, laborer to craftsman, 
uh, to artisan, capitalist, or like any anything like that, going up or down a population step is more likely the higher your administrative efficiency is. Uh, factor input efficiency tech, that lowers the amount of resources that you need for a factory. Uh, freedom of trade uh, increases the output of your factories. Generally, I find that you're better off going through industry as long as you can before messing with these. Organized factories, uh, I think, I think it's somewhat similar to uh, output. It just, it, it's just general, generally, um, I'm not actually sure. Sorry, my, uh, it would probably just increase the output. Like, you don't need to think about it that hard. Culture in general, some of it's good, like uh, idealism to increase your general research speed. Uh, prestige gain is somewhat important, but you can afford to leave it for a while. Uh, positivism is, I find, important, especially as Russia. Your education efficiency is how, how, in, how well your money spent on education is used. And uh, psychology is just for reinforcement and uh, your army experience, which is fairly self-explanatory. In industry, mining output, farming output, if you are heavily agricultural slash uh, mining based, it's a good thing. Although generally I find if you uh, going for specific, uh, going for specifics is better. Uh, with most countries, although probably with Russia, it's such a large country that you could argue that Practical Steam Engine is a better first pick, but like say you're playing Krakow, whose primary, primary export is coal, picking up clean coal massively increases the amount of money you get. Uh, mechanization uh, just increases how efficient its factories are. Railro railroad allows you to build railroads, uh, which increase... they have a sort of knock-on effect to factory efficiency and they also increase your movement speed and uh, reinforcement rate all that sort of thing on land chemistry is your supply limit fairly important as russia because they've got those big siberian wastelands um, but again with our research as low as it is currently we really need to pick up battles and because i want to do the early war against china i'm going to pick up army professionalism and then probably pick up Idealism will be unlocked by the time that's finished, uh, possibly. If it's not, we'll we'll deal with it when we get there. The other things we can look at: uh, politics. So, as the game pro progresses, your population will become more and more uh, conscious, and sort of it's like unrest. You get unrest over time, uh, which pushes you towards making these reforms, which. You know, they're positive and negative. They, we'll talk about them as we get to them because they're a fairly big, big part of the game. I don't think we need to front load it. As an absolute monarchy, we can appoint our ruling party. Uh, Slavophile are a conservative government. Trade policy protectionism, protectionism that means that we want a tariff. Uh, interventionalism means that we should be able to well, it says this is a free market economy, but the government reserves the right to intervene when the national interest requires it. Moralism is church and states are a single body. Residency means that people uh, coming to the country don't really have proper rights. And jingoism means that we are you know, fairly big towards a military complex. Westernizer is sort of towards a more modern way of thinking, laissez-faire, economics, free trade. That would be crippling for us at the moment because of our low education base. And Pan-Slavic is sort of hyper, um, hyper conservative. Uh, we will get a access to new ruling parties and to new government types as the game goes on. I probably will try and stay in absolute monarchy, but we'll see how, how we go. Um, movements are essentially your, they're sort of, uh, very long-term, very long-term rebellion, rebellions, almost like 
an exaggerated version of a national crisis, ex except they usually say it's a movement towards making the minimum wage trinket minimum wage. So the bigger they get, they might fire and try and force it, but also you'll slowly get the ability to make these social reforms based on your upper upper house. Uh, although with an absolute monarchy, I'm not sure that we can make them regardless. No, 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 it's, it's, your upper house just needs to be in favour of a reform, uh, to make a reform. Uh, generally, they're not that big of a worry unless you're intentionally holding your country back, which can be useful. Um, Russia, in particular, obviously, has a bit of a problem around 1917 with a certain de demographic, um, historically. We'll see how that goes. I don't particularly want to become a communist, but we'll see how everything shakes out. Uh, decisions are uh, much like EU4 decisions. Uh, we do want to do the peasant reform at some point. Restoring the academia, that just gets rid of the modifiers that we had, but hurts our research points for 10 years and lowers our prestige. Uh, we don't particularly want to do that because the biggest nega trait we have currently is navy, and we do not care about our navy as Russia, or at least I don't. So we, we're just going to leave that one. The peasant reform is basically getting rid of serfdom. Uh, clicking it, you lose uh, militancy, gain consciousness, uh, lose infamy, and gain a bunch of research points. Gaining consciousness means that your population is more likely to want reforms. Militancy is their desire to uh, enact changes through rebellion. Um, in general, you will trend upwards on consciousness over time, or you will trend upwards in militancy over time. Uh, you can't really... You, it's sort of a balance between them. Releasing nations, um, I don't really want to do this. I may release Poland, uh, just because I like Poland, and um, it'll also provide a buffer between us, and it'll cost us sort of uh, base production and manpower and all that because it's good land, but it will provide a buffer between us and Prussia, which I may need later on if I haven't finished off uh, taking over China, if they form Germany. Uh, we will probably sell Alaska back to America at some point. Trade screen. The trade screen is a horrible nightmare that you don't really have to worry about. Uh, automating trade in 99% of the case is completely fine. Although, I will say steamer convoys, like, don't, I don't want any. And depending on money, you can stop automating, automating the buying of... Uh, artillery because it costs a lot if you need to if you don't need to use your military short term and you need extra money short term otherwise really this screen handles itself it is potentially possible to be more efficient than the AI but in general it's such it's such a nuisance I'm pretty sure like no one really messes with this screen much uh, apart from maybe setting you know setting the maximum stockpile uh, and then leaving it for autom to automate because it is just such a bother to do this manually. Budget. As you can see, we are horribly in the red. Most of that is coming from our naval units. As Russia, if you want to play the colonization game, you sort of want to have more... You want to have some navy presence, mostly to uh, be... be able to beat out Denmark. Uh, is your big sort of rival in the seas. I am not going to bother. Like, they co it costs so much money. I'm just going to flat up uh, disband our navies. Uh, the sidebar here is much like the EU4 one. It'll show you your navies and armies. It's very useful. We've got an, uh, a navy in the Crimean Sea. Again, not going to worry about it too much. I don't think we're going to be warring with the Ottomans short term. Uh... We'll see how we go. I don't really... Like, this is good land to get. Um, especially around here. There's there's some good coal up around here. Yeah, good resources. Opium, which is amazing. Um, but, hey, whatever. That's, uh, that, that's also the big thing about Victoria 2 in provinces. The biggest thing... Like, it has this modifier. There's not a lot you can do about it. It just happens. Different modifiers modifiers happen just ignore them mostly but the big thing about a province is its output 
So like here we're selling, we can make grain, we're selling grain. So if you're going to build a factory, you generally want to build it on an area where it has one of the resources that's, that goes into that factory in the province. Uh, we'll go more into that a bit later when we start industrializing. Uh, Russia is quite good in that it has, like, has a bunch of lumber, has a bunch of uh, agriculture, and it also has a nice amount of coal, which I find quite, sells quite well, and some steel along these mountains here, which is also uh, quite nice to build around. Uh, up around this land over here is not very good, like you mostly ignore the Siberian wastes. Uh, it's not it's not worth spending time on to upgrade up here because the land just is so uh, poor. Um, so now I've sold the, that navy, uh, the, the navy stuff, I'll drop that down. Uh, we'll make a bit of money there. I do find with peasants, just tax them, at the beginning at least, you can tax them a huge amount. Uh, our middle, our middle, I'm going to tax about that much, and our capitalists and aristocrats. I'm not going to tax at all. Uh, long term, you don't get that much from them. You do get a little bit, but not that much. And it, the less you tax them, the more likely they are to invest in... Uh, factories and the like once we start getting capitalists which will happen as we educate speaking of we want to bump our education up the top uh, administration I don't think we're gonna have the money to really do administration just yet we can afford to have some tariffs uh, it hurts our factory production but we don't have any factories so for now we can afford to do it I'll drop that down those down low when we start building factories um, military spending for now that's fine there We'll also put down here the, this is your sort of spending on the equipment that land units use. This is spending on equipment that naval units use. This is, is spending on factories and the like that you're production, pr pr producing. Uh, we probably will have to take this down like 75% just for now. We'll see how our money shakes out after this month is over because our naval spending will uh, definitely go down because we will, we've disbanded it all. Um, Oh, just making sure we're not building any navies, no. So that'll, that'll go down further, and we'll have a better idea of how our tax sort of spins out. We may we may need to put tax higher on the middle class for now, uh, which hurts our country, but again, short term we can afford to do it because we're already so far behind. Like, it, it being a little bit further behind doesn't matter before we start getting our education up. Uh, military works somewhat similar to EU4. Uh, and that's all of the screens. As Russia, our biggest production is timber, grain, lumber, cattle, and glass. Glass is not through factories, that's through artisans. Um, we, we don't have any factories just yet. There's two ways to build, oh, three ways to build factories. Uh, capitalists can build factories by themselves. You can, if you have the right government type, hit this button to build factories. It costs a fair bit. Or uh, there is another screen. If I can find it. Uh, uh, projects. You can invest in a factory that a capitalist is making. Uh, it basically creates a factory at a much reduced cost, but you don't get to choose what the factory is. Uh, it, these will just populate. Uh, we won't get many of those to begin with because we've got fuck all craftsmen and no capitalists. That's really the first thing you want to do as, uh, as Russia. Right. As I said, I'm going to try and attack China. Uh, this is a risky thing to do. Nope. This may take a bit. Oh my god, I've uh, I've got my mouse buttons bound opposite to what I usually do because my mouse is a little bit broken, so I will be making small mistakes to begin with. Uh, I'm fairly happy with leaving the European border sort of a bit bare uh, while I do this, just because... Um, oh, for fuck's sake. Just because I don't think... 
we'll get into any wars uh, anytime soon. The biggest thing that causes war... <sighs> bugger, wrong button again. The biggest thing that causes wars um, is having cause, and I don't believe... Let me have a look. How do I tell... Oh, here we go, cause. So I've got Polish cause. Russian cause, yeah. So the only cause we'll ha we have on this land over here uh, are countries that don't exist. If the German Empire forms, then we will have... Um, we will The German Empire will have cause over Poland, the, the Polish area, and we will come into con conflict with them. So for the moment, we don't really need to worry about the um, the Western Front that much, I don't feel. And we can get back over here. It'll be a long war if they attack us. We'll be able to get back into position. It's fine. Speaking of, uh, although Germany will eventually become our enemy, uh, I think... Let me just check Austria, actually. can I don't think Austria will want to form an alliance. Oh, they'll accept. Um, for the short term, I'm actually happier having Austria as an ally. So I'm going to form an alliance with Austria. Uh, we'll be fighting with uh, with Germany as well, Prussia as well, over a certain uh, sphere of influence, which will be the next. Our next thing that we do is our spheres. Um, so especially Sweden. Uh, Sweden is fairly hotly contested. So. Uh, so let's continue just moving our army across and hopefully we will get unpaused at some point during this episode okay, that's that's fine we need roughly a hundred K troops I think to to fight China so that should you know just to be safe I'm gonna grab another 9k uh, yeah you're fairly close anyway grab another 9k and just pull them over to here um, so spheres we are a great power we're second um, that will come more into play when we start getting into wars the our great power status uh, but the big benefit of being great power is that you can sphere people spheering is sort of halfway between an ally and a vassal if someone's in your sphere I believe they're more likely to trade with you they're basically guaranteed to come to war with you and be your ally um, as Russia we want to look at uh, I believe there's an event with Manchuria so we want Manchuria I'll go priority too because there's not really anyone else in the region that wants to, to mess with it uh, I would like to get Sweden Sweden's a little bit hard to sphere because uh, they have cores on us but they have a decision that they sometimes take which We'll uh, get rid of that. I may go to war to bring them into our sphere uh, at some point. Apart from that, uh, I do like having Egypt. Um, I think Egypt is sort of a, a decent power in the region. And they have some good resources, although they're a low priority for us. Apart from that, we could try and bring Persia in. Uh, or we could try and attack Persia long term. Persian land, let's see, what do they have? I think they've got steel and opium, is it? No, cotton, is that cotton? They've got cotton, a bit of agriculture, a bit of coal. It's not bad land. They put us right up against, hmm. I think we leave Persia and, or leave Persia, and if we're gonna leave Persia, we should try and get them into our sphere. Um, they'll help against the Ottomans if it comes to it. Uh, the Ottomans are a fairly decent power. They're nowhere near as strong as they were in EU4. Uh, this is sort of the period of decline of the Ottomans. Uh, apart from that, our big first enemy is the Chinese Empire, which is sort of a collection of smaller Chinese states uh, run by the Chinese Empire just here. Um, Manchuria. 
Manchuria's over here, so just picking that up would be nice. Uh, Manchuria is by themselves. But we want to expand into Mongolia first, and then uh, Qing, Qing Hai, and get to this land down here in the Chinese Empire, and uh, uh, Guangxi, uh, because this is very good land with very a very high population base, which will mean we just don't have uh, problems with armies in, in the long term. The smart monkey play is to leave the Chinese Empire until we've advanced a bit more. Because they're uncivilized, we will out-tech them and just destroy their armies. They do have a massive army to begin the game with. A big gap between, gap between us and them isn't as large as you'd maybe like. But um, I think we can do it. It'd be nice if we can pick up Manchuria first. Manchuria has um, some decent land. It's okay. Uh, Denmark wants to ally us, which is interesting. Denmark is actually... He's a secondary power. Or it's not even a secondary power yet. But Denmark can become a quite a strong power. And it would be a decent ally against uh, Prussia. Although they may bring us into war with Prussia a little earlier than we'd like. Let me just double check. Uh, German Empire, Holstein. Okay, no, no, no. It should be okay. Looks like Prussia doesn't have any cores. It's only the German Empire with this cores. So we should be okay to ally Denmark. And if we're going to ally Denmark, we should probably spend some... I might even make it a priority to try and bring them into S-Sphere. The problem is that long... Oh, I'll make it a 2. The problem is that long term, we will... Um, they will probably break free of us when they become... They, they can become a great power. Especially with us sort of beating down the Chinese Empire. It shouldn't win at that. Uh, I expect that Denmark may become a great power in this game. But we will for now. I'm happy to uh, be allied with Denmark and Prussia. Uh, Sweden, I don't think they'll ally, ally us, yeah, because of the core provinces, but they may, they, they can take a decision which gets rid of that. I may even just cede this land to them. Um, it, it's not really that amazing, the land, and it would help us greatly, like our relations with them and everything. I'll see how I go, but I don't really need that. I don't really need that land, especially if we manage to get them into S-Sphere. Uh, they'll basically protect, protect the entire northern front of Russia. Okay, um, this video is nearly over, but... Oh, uh, the other thing before we can pause in this 30 minute long video where I don't, where I don't unpause, uh, is National Focus. Uh, it is basically you can do stuff to provinces. Now what I'm going to do is, over here, I'm going to encourage craftsmen. Because the first thing I really want to do is start working the steel. I quite like working, working the steel. Uh, it's generally you turn it into military goods, which A, never really go out of fashion, and B, you can get, supply, get your army supplied cheaper. Um, the other focus, where, where's Moscow? Moscow, jewel of the Russian land. I don't know, there we go, Ooh, Mos I don't know where Moscow is, I'm a failure. I've played, I think I'm too far across, I think it's over here somewhere. Uh, There is a button to find provinces. Let's zoom right in and go Moscow. There we go. Uh, I will also... What do you have? You have lumber. And... Just going to encourage... Actually sort of don't want to do that. Might encourage capitalists. Uh, it probably isn't going to do that much for us because we're so illiterate, but uh, I'm going to do it anyway because I like doing it. Okay. Uh, let us finally unpause. And Austria has accepted the military alliance, which is good. They're a fairly big power. Uh, although World War One, 
uh, win the World War One. Damn, United Kingdom strong percent of Sweden. I don't necessarily expect to get Sweden. Uh, down here is honestly most of this can be ignored. Uh, that's why it's in this bar. It's just a lot of a lot of sort of minor things, mostly about uh, discredit discrediting and alliances with the great powers. As you can see, our budget is actually doing fairly well. Uh, plus plus two or three. I'm gonna pump into education because that's our biggest biggest concern early game. And if we have some money left over, I'm going to push some into administrative. Uh, I might even be able to push this to max. I can. And we will... There's no use sort of stockpiling money. We should use it if we've got it. So if I do that... Looks solid. We'll go with speed 3. I will read out these. So... This is the newspaper. This is a dynamically generated, uh, sort of, the big, the big things happening in the world, although there is a, is a, a bias towards things close to us. Uh, some of it's, some of it is fluff stuff or historical stuff, like find the Cetiosaurus. Uh, So, Brazil and Paraguay are now at war. Uh, oh, we've got a gold rush, which is nice. Uh, immigration. We won't get much immigration because of... Because of uh, being a monarchy. Immigration is mostly what uh, drives you towards uh, being, a uh, being a democracy. Uh, it's one of the, the primary reasons to become a uh, democracy. So, Brazil and Paraguay are at war. Uh, Hanover. The mood of Hanoverian officials is one of frightful apprehension when it comes to the actions of Prussia. Being ever watchful of their actions, many fear that the eventual war between both countries will result in a cruel defeat to Hanover. Uh, and Bavaria and Prussia are becoming allies. We've got a gold rush. Uh, up here, it's not a very big... This is a bit micromanaging. This is one of the things I think they will they would change in a Victoria 3, the way this works. When you get a certain amount of influence with people, you've got to go to them, click them, and you can... If they're at the highest level of friendship, you can add them to your sphere. You can discredit other nations or just increase your opinion. I'm not that invested in getting... I, I'm sort of invested in, in getting Sweden in our side, uh, but I'm not sure it'll happen, so I'm not going to bother playing the discrediting game. I'm just going to try and naturally increase our influence. The big thing we want is uh, Manchuria for them now, because if we add them to our sphere, we can just annex them, and that's a lot of free land for not a lot of work. Uh, we're all, we're pretty secure as well on the on the Western Front with uh, Austria-Hungary and uh, as an ally. Okay, uh, that should do it for this episode. I hope you found it. If not entertaining, at least informative. Uh, I think. Oh Christ, we're suffering like a fuckload of attrition here. You people go up here. You guys go here first, then make your way up to here. Okay, um, I think Victoria 2 is a lot of fun to play, but it is a little confusing to get into because it is one of the older games currently in the Paradox Library. Uh, I think every other series has not had an upgrade since uh, Victoria 2 came out. But gentlemen, I'll see you on the other side, I'll see you on the other side, where hopefully we start gearing up for war. Uh, it may not happen overnight, but it will happen.